Hello everyone, Sam Huggins here, your second favorite YouTube musician, and I had a uh, fun little idea to do today. Today is one day before the two-year anniversary of the release of my first ever uh, lo-fi instrumental album called Lo-Fi Slumber. Uh, the album originally was released in uh, May on May 22nd of 2019, and tomorrow is uh, May 22nd of 2021. And so I figured it would be really fun to go through uh, the album now, two years later, uh, say my thoughts on it and uh, talk a little bit about how the album did and what came from the album. But before we get into that, first we have a brief message from today's sponsor. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we have a sponsor. Today's video is brought to you by the good folks over at plays.org. Plays.org is an awesome free website that has a whole list of over 150 free online games and they're adding more to it every day. As most of us know, Adobe Flash, which is a plugin that allowed a lot of free online games to run previously, died in 2020. Hello darkness, my old friend. I've come to talk with you again. One of the many unfortunate bad things that happened last year. <laughs> but some sites like Place.org found ways to work around it and are still going on having a list and a catalog of a lot of great fun games that don't require Flash to run and still work perfectly fine. Just yesterday, I streamed myself looking through some of the games and playing in the, a couple of them. And honestly, I really had a great time. My favorite was definitely the Mini Golf. And, um,. Well, it went interestingly. Here's a clip. The Paris Five, I've already shot six holes. Please, can we at least get double bogey maximum? All right, here we go. All right, well, it's, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. We'll try again, we'll try again. It's fine, it's fine, we'll try again. <laughs> It's fine. Everything is fine. We will try this one more time. Quintuple bogey, as it should be. So, if you're interested in playing some free online games, I highly recommend plays.org. They run with zero ads whatsoever, which is great to hear because a whole lot of free online game sites are really just like their sources of ad revenue like there's like 20 ads all over the place and they're like oh hey you look like you need to buy um lederhosen <laughs> you'll get none of that with place.org so if you're interested please go check them out there'll be a link to them in the description and a link to the twitch vod of me streaming some of the games so if you can if you'd like to see what some of them like or my opinion on them please go free to check that out in the link in the description below thanks again to the folks over at place.org for reaching out and sponsoring this video now let's get back to it so first things first we're just going to take a look at my page on spotify here um as you can see we've got the album right here lo-fi slumber um, so Lo-Fi Slumber 2019, seven, is only seven songs. On Spotify, uh, seven songs or more qualifies as an album. And I really just wanted to have the album tag instead of the EP tag. So I decided to um, add it to up to seven songs. The album cover for this album is actually a picture I took at a little uh, market in Quebec of a little fire pit and then with some effects and little graphics on it and whatnot. But I want it to be kind of like, have almost like the look and feel of a vinyl album cover. As well as for more aesthetic things, uh, all the song names have like kind of chill titles and they're all in all lower cases, you know, gotta have that lo-fi aesthetic. <laughs> So obviously with this album, there's one very glaring and obvious thing about it. Only one of the songs in the album did well, and that's Tell Me Why I'm Waiting, <laughs> which is easily the biggest song of mine to date and which catapulted my music into something people actually heard. What, ma what the main thing that differentiates Tell Me Why I'm Waiting from all the other songs on this album is that it has a vocal sample uh, from an artist by the name of Shiloh Dynasty. Uh, Shadow Dynasty uh, released uh, a while back a bunch of vocal and guitar recordings onto their SoundCloud, and they're very commonly used in lo-fi genres like this. And I found one, and I decided to make a song around it, and the result was "Tell Me Why I'm Waiting," and it uh, it it 
did so much better than I thought it ever would. So before we get more into that story, let's um, listen to all the songs real quick. I'm just gonna play a little snippet of each one and say how I feel about the song. First one is Bliss. I love uh, this track because it's, it sounds like kind of like like a tape recorder and like it's not like ambient. It's still like kind of clean, but it's nice. I really like that synth. All in all, I'm uh, I still quite like Bliss. Bliss has always been one of my uh, favorite songs from this uh, album. I think it's uh, exactly kind of what I wanted my lo-fi to be. Next up is Jazz Cafe. This song has some dissonant notes in it. And I didn't catch them when I made and released it because I was a lot worse of a producer back then. But it still bugs me. Like, uh, yeah, this song has a lot of dissent notes that I didn't really catch because I was a worse producer back then. It is what it is. I'm not a huge fan of Jazz Cafe. Vintage Dreams. I like this one. This one's super fun. Uh, it's probably a bit longer than it should be. It's a very simplistic song. But I like the panning action. It's very open. This is like, it's, it's, it's elevate. It's like hold music, but like kind of enjoyable. All right, next one is Morning Coffee. Now this one, I didn't really originally make for this album. This was just a beat I made, uh, but I figured it felt with the aesthetic of this album a lot. I like the thunder here. Now, the only real problem with this song is I'm not sure if it really fits the aesthetic of lo-fi too well. It might be a bit too hype, you know? Next, tell me why I'm waiting. It's finally here. This song is classic lo-fi. I'll give it that. Honestly, I, I have a lot to say about the song, and we'll get into it later. Let's just move on to Rainy Days for now. Rainy Days, I think, is the most traditionally lo-fi song on this album. I'm quite proud of this one, because I just feel like it, it embodies lo-fi the most. That one's kind of fun. I like that one. And lastly, Campfire Tunes. This one's just kind of fun. That one's fun. I'm not crazy about it. It doesn't like stick in your head too well, but that's okay. Lo-fi isn't necessarily supposed to. So now I think it's time, time to go deep into Tell Me Why I'm Waiting. So Tell Me Why I'm Waiting uh, started out as this innocuous track I made that was actually the inspiration for most of this album is I created that song and then I was like, hmm, I'm, I should just put out a lo-fi project. Like, I, I really like this. Let's make an album around this. And that's where most of these songs came from. But I, looking back, I really, I can only hear the flaws in this song, unfortunately. Um, I know it has a decent bit going for it, but I can only hear the part, I can only hear what I don't like. And unfortunately that's a lot. Um, there's a, like a little percussion solo element that I think really sounds just gross, takes you out of the song, it's super repetitive. There's no high end element. So it definitely feels like it grows in tension. I think it just lacks a lot of the finesse that I have learned to grow in in these past two years. Um, but it's the most popular song I've ever made so far. <laughs> Tell Me I'm Waiting is directly responsible for me hitting a grand total of 20,000 streams across all platforms um, and hitting at my peak around 500 monthly listeners on Spotify, which was just incredible. Like it, it still blows my mind that that many people listen to my music. Like here, let's take a look at some of the Spotify statistics around this song. 
Okay, so this is the data set for the past year of Tell Me Why I'm Waiting. Unfortunately, it won't display more than a year, but here's what we're going to do. Um, and so you can see there are some peaks on some days, and it's on a downward trend, but that's okay. Uh, you can see right here the total on Spotify is 17,305 streams. Across all platforms, it totals around 19,000, and then I have 1,000 streams between all my other songs. Um, so yeah, that's incredible. Uh, most of the sources of streams are people adding it to playlists, which is awesome. Um, I'm super happy to hear that. Some of them are actually coming from Spotify algorithmic playlists, which I believe is like Discover Weekly and things like that. So that's super cool. Um, now let's look at the top countries for this song. It's one of the really cool features of the songs is that it, uh, it breaks down a lot of the stuff. So this is just in the last 28 days. As you can see, most of my plays are coming from the United States, but anything that has um, some amount of color, it was actually listened to in that country recently. So we've got we've got Australia, we've got Indonesia, we've got the Russian Federation, we've got India, we've got so Saudi Arabia, we've got Brazil, Bolivia, Argentina, and Ch Peru. It's like super cool. As well as some of the top cities, um, Germany was actually responsible for a lot of the success of this, which is kind of like really mind blowing that it could go off in Germany. <laughs> and so you can see a lot of the popular uh, cities where uh, this music was streamed. So it's very interesting. Well, now we look at some of the geographical data. Uh, last thing I want to do is actually look at some of the playlists that this uh, song made into. Um, Spotify artists let you see the titles of a lot of the playlists that your songs appear in. And so we're going to take a look at some of the titles of playlists that this song has made its way into. Okay, so this song has shown up in almost 300 playlists that users have created. Uh, the top one being a playlist called Lo Fi and Shiloh. Um, then Songs Zum Nach Den Ken. Uh, which I assume is a European language. I can't speak. <laughs> then a place called Chill Beats. Torum em todas. Um, I'm sorry. I know I'm butchering this. I'm trying. Losing interest. Distract. I think that's just one of the places someone creates just to listen to their own thing. Tearing up pieces. My streaming playlist. I have the song in my playlist for uh, when I do live streams, which link in description. Uh, Lo-fi anime personal faves. Oh, I'm a, I'm a personal fave. Um, yeah, some sad lo-fi beats. Someone's top songs of 2020 this made it into. That's really cool. Uh, songs on repeat, also really cool. Top songs 2019. Um, yeah, so a lot of this is like super cool. I'm super happy that my song has gotten into playlists and that people enjoy it enough to put it onto a playlist. I, I feel blessed. <laughs> like genuinely, this is, it, it, warms, it warms me up inside. And that's part of why I wanted to do like revisiting the album like this is um, I wanted to say thank you to everyone who um who kind of encouraged me along the way with this album um i mean realistically it makes more sense to do this kind of video one year after right not two years do you want to know why i'm doing it two years after instead of one year i forgot to do this last year so we're doing it this year <laughs> In any case, releasing Lo-Fi Slumber was uh, both a great decision and also a really bad one. I'm super happy I did it because it put me into this great position where I have, like, still to this day, almost 200 monthly listeners still and, like, 17,000 streams on one song. But at the same time, I feel like I've kind of been put into a box by those listeners um, where if I release something that isn't Lo-Fi, I'm not sure that the listeners I currently have will stick around. Um, and that's just the necessary evil of changing the style of music I make. I would like to make music that isn't Lo-Fi in the future. And so if I release that music, uh, it might not find the same success this album did. And you know what? That's okay. If, if I was making music just to uh, see bigger numbers next to my name, I think I'd be a very sad person. <laughs> all right, well, thank you all very much for watching this little revisiting of Lo-Fi Slumber. Uh, if any of you listened to Lo-Fi Slumber in the past or have any thoughts on it, please comment them down below. I would love to hear what you have to say about the album. My name is Sam Huggins. Have yourself a very nice day. P.S. The background music for this video are actually songs from Lo-Fi Slumber 2, an album I released of August of that year. I suggest you check it out. Thank you.